Hi, everyone. Uh, how are you? Uh, Shane Stevenson, uh, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And this is an important update. I decided to bring it to you live. Uh, and this will be one of many updates as we begin moving forward uh, to answer some questions, uh, to give you the full story as to what's going on with the dry dock for USS The Sullivans. Now this comes on the heels of Battleship New Jersey releasing their dry dock uh, and speaking to other museum ships that are also beginning dry docking plans. Uh, obviously, with the Sullivans last year and the amount of attention that it received worldwide, uh, we felt it was important to bring you information and in what has been done and what we are continuing to work on. Uh, there's some complexity with the uh, dry docking of the USS the Sullivans that say you wouldn't find in a, a coastal museum ship or one where a dry dock is readily available. There used to be a time when there was a couple dry docks here in Buffalo, just about half a mile away. They are not around anymore, so uh, we have to uh, visit other uh, dry docks in other areas. So I'll run through this. Some of this is never before uh, talked about or seen. And um, uh, so away we go. I have a PowerPoint presentation for you, and I'll go through it line by line. Uh, I see that some people are on, and uh, if you have any questions uh, that I can answer uh, live, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, the first thing that is an important uh, part of this dry docking plan is that these were numbers, the numbers that I'll be showing you were from the first quarter of this past year, of this year. So for 2023, uh, these are direct numbers uh, that we've received uh, and we expect them to change as we move forward. So it's important to mention that uh, to you, that these are the numbers that we have currently. That does not mean that they will be the numbers when we're actually ready to get uh, under tow to a dry dock. And again, you'll see some of the challenges that we have. So I'm going to bring up uh, the PowerPoint. Just give me a minute here. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. So for everyone's benefit, we're gonna recap a little bit of uh, some of the major highlights of the capsizing event last year of USS the Sullivans. Now, for everyone who's watching live, uh, just know that I'm looking at the screen of the PowerPoint, so I can't see comments right now. So maybe hold them off until I minimize uh, the PowerPoint, uh, and then I can we'll be able to see the comments. So to recap, uh, we were able to remove uh, we removed 1.2 million gallons of water. Included in that 1.2 million gallons was 40,000 gallons of oily waste and river debris. So included in the 1.2, we had oil coming from the uh, fuel oil tanks and uh, debris that got in from the river uh, through uh, two areas in particularly, uh, and then certainly just the debris around uh, the ship as well. One of the major highlights and what we think is the first link in the chain that I've discussed before was the starboard side uh, four foot gash that we received when the ship hit the bottom of the river. And that was probably the event that started it all. The Sage came in, raised the ship, uh, and she connected with the bottom, creating that four foot hole right around frame 
95 in the forward engine room. They also ended up cementing a 20-foot patch along the bilge keel uh, on the port side. So given the way that we were capsized, the port side was uh, thankfully uh, was out of water um, for a portion of of the of the sinking and the capsizing, uh, but we were able to cement a twenty foot patch of degradation on the port side, and I have a picture of some of those. You'll see here two pictures of the twenty foot patch that were cemented. This would be very similar to the four foot patch that we had on the starboard side. <coughs> um, these are temporary patches, right? We are inspecting these patches to make sure that there's no cracking or leaking, but that is what cement does. Over time, it cracks and uh, begins to let uh, liquid into the interior of the cement. So for those two areas, we are uh, monitoring those. But these are, you could probably see the one on the right is a little forward. You'll see that pipe on the left side of the right image, which would be that pipe that's in the center of the left image. So we're gonna give you a budget status report as of right now. Uh, since April 14th, 2022, uh, the Naval Park has spent over $2.5 million, including more than $500,000 that we've received in public contributions to the recovery effort specifically. As some of you have seen, and we've done videos with our, our Marine surveyor, uh, Joe Lombardi, uh, additional funding was spent to get that survey done of our three vessels. And the city of Buffalo was a good partner in helping us uh, with some of those costs. Now we've mentioned before that we have received commitments from federal and state. So let's run through those. Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, a senator from New York State, has pledged $7.5 million. Five million of that will come from the Housing and Ur Urban Development, or HUD, and 2.5 will come from the National Park Service. From the New York State Majority Leader uh, for the Assembly, Crystal Peoples Stokes, she has pledged $500,000. And Congressman Brian Higgins has pledged, from the House of Representatives, has pledged $490,000. So in total, the federal and state contributions uh, to USS the Sullivan specifically is $8.4 million. But you'll see that it's been pledged and we have not yet received it. We are working with all three offices and we are just going through the process of getting that funding. The 490,000 from Congressman Brian Higgins has already been committed to funding the survivability plan for USS The Sullivans. All right, and this work has begun. That includes watertight integrity, electricity distribution and restoration, all right, which is coming along wonderfully, and ventilation, especially during the summertime when it's very humid, and of course during the wintertime when we want to dehumidify and keep that temperature of USS the Sullivan's we're looking at about 40 to 45 degrees, keeping that temperature above that. So we're looking at heaters, uh, certainly pumps for the survivability plan, air movers, dehumidifiers. All right. That also then includes the temporary shore power that we have. 
So if we take away that money that Congressman Higgins has pledged that we've been using to build our survivability plan, we have roughly $8 million that's still pledged. And again, we are working with those offices uh, to secure those in the uh, proper way. The survivability plan, that is to keep the ship floating while she is still here in Buffalo at the Buffalo Naval Park. What needs to happen to get her to a dry dock? Well, you'll see some of these things that we have not talked about before. Dredging of the Buffalo River. And we also need to do sediment testing so we know that we're not releasing anything into the Buffalo River. We have to move USS Little Rock. We also have to remove USS Croker. We have to remove the mooring tower and four Trellix bumpers. We have to remediate the hazardous materials that could have been released from USS The Sullivans. We certainly know that some has been released, all right? And that's why no one goes down except for staff uh, properly uh, geared up to go down below uh, the ship into spaces where there has been hazardous material release. So we're going to remediate all of that before she goes to dry dock. And of course, the trip and tow and the tow plan itself. So working through all of these numbers, having the quotes in hand, we are looking at even before she moves 400 feet towards the Lake Erie, that we are going to need to spend about $6 million. And again, these funds are first quarter 2023, so they will probably change. So on the right in this image, you'll see the mooring tower and the mooring pier that we have to remove. All right, that is sunken into the Buffalo River and we will need to barge it out. On the left side, you will see the Trellix bumpers, and there are four of those. Those are attached to our promenade, and we will have to remove those. So to give you an overview using a map here, You'll see the blue line coming from Little Rock. We are actually going to pull her into the Buffalo River and move her aft or move her astern of USS the Sullivans. In addition, the blue line that you see in the upper left is we have to remove uh, the croaker. So she will be tugged closer along the pier uh, farther up the Buffalo River. The red represents that mooring pier that will have to uh, be barged out. And then you can see the green line representing the Sullivans will then slip through and uh, start her tug or her start her toe. Maybe some of you have heard these of the dry docks. The three closest dry docks to us that would hold a 370-foot ship are Erie, Pennsylvania, Toledo, Ohio, and Port Weller, Ontario. We have received preliminary numbers from each of these, and the range is 7.5 to 8.5 million with these three quotes that we've received. Again, that was first quarter of this year, bound to change for next year. So what are some of the next steps? We need to continue to raise funding through contributions. 
We've also applied for $2.7 million through what's called the New York State Consolidated Funding uh, application. All right. Awardees are uh, notified in January of this coming year. So that application and, uh, has been uh, submitted. And we will also continue to advocate to the city, county, state, and federal entities <clears throat> to be added into their budgets for next year. So let's see. So that's the update that you see as of right now. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Hyper K7 says that stuff's going to have to be reinstalled when Sullivan's comes back. It more than likely will. We may take that time to look at a new nesting or birthing or home port options when the ship is away. Uh, USS uh, Stealth 96. Hope USS Croker makes it. Uh, there is a plan. The next dry dock will be for Croker. And we are beginning preliminary talks uh, to set up uh, campaigns for the Croker as well. She is in fairly decent shape. We have identified a hole that has been filled with foam in the 6A ballast tank on the starboard side. Uh, so she's stable for now. One of the important things is the dredging. Uh, there is only seven feet of Buffalo River near the bow of the croaker. That means when the waves are high and she's riding high and when she comes down from a seiche, we do not know the condition of what that riverbed is. Blue Rebel, hello. Thank you uh, for watching it. Cam, hello. Uh, Andrew, yes, we are. Scott, yes, we are looking for, they've been wonderful partners with us, the county, uh, city, uh, state, and federal. And they have stepped forward with pledges. And we will continue to work with them to make sure those pledges uh, turn into the actual dollars. Uh, Hyper K7, does the forward engine room have to be redone due to water damage? Absolutely. The, as of right now, there are no tours that go below uh, the main deck. Uh, they cleaned, they pumped out the water, they pumped out the oily debris. We then had the cleaning company come in and they, uh, they sanitized all of the spaces that were touched with water. And then they pumped out that water into uh, frack tanks as well. So that is where the status, that's the status of below decks on the Sullivans. We have not touched anything. We are working on the electrical panels and we have a wonderful uh, group of volunteers uh, and working with the USS Slater uh, that have been slowly and surely bringing power back to the ship under its own uh, under its own power, as opposed to the temporary uh, transformers that we have been using. Talisman 7690, one with Little Rock. Little Rock, as of right now, is extremely stable. We just have a drip drip in the packing glands of one of the prop shafts. And when I say drip drip, and I mean drip drip, it is very slow. And that gets pumped right out, uh, right overboard. So that is the only source of degradation on Little Rock. So Little Rock might be, she might be five to six to seven years out. Might be. Um, so you'll see one of the most, uh, one of the most important things is that we get the plan to get the Sullivans out is the right plan. And we've been working diligently. Uh, the staff, Paul Marzello, the president, Bill Abbott, our director of operations, this isn't any conversations that I'm involved with, typically. Uh, they've been working with the companies to make sure that we're getting that step by step. 
But if you see an excess of $6 million just to move the Sullivans, uh, that is something that many other naval parks don't have to, uh, you know, they, they, that's not a challenge that they have, let alone the distance, you know, 90 miles to uh, Erie, 35 miles roughly to Port Weller, Ontario, uh, or 250 miles to Toledo. So, um, how are the state re uh, stealth 96? How are the state responses to Canada at the moment? The, the benefit to a Canadian dry dock is that much of the trip will be in covered waters through the Welland Canal. Uh, so that is protected water. Uh, it certainly is a shorter trip, and we are working through negotiations to see if we can get to uh, Port Weller, Ontario. Uh, just from a distance factor uh, and being in protected waters of the Welland Canal, that's something that we are uh, heavily weighing uh, as opposed to Erie or Toledo. Well, um, I think that's the update for now. Certainly, we'll be giving you more updates as we move forward. Uh, but we wanted to get those numbers out because, again, with Battleship New Jersey releasing theirs, uh, we know of other museum ships that have begun negotiations with dry docks. And we wanted to preempt and answer any questions as to, especially, did you get the funding? What's taking so long? For lack of a better phrase, what's taking so long? All right. And so uh, a few of us sat down, Paul and Bill uh, and Courtney, we sat down today uh, and crafted this PowerPoint. Uh, and so it's the most up-to-date information, seeing as how we just put it together an hour, an hour and a half ago. So, Cam, I could totally speak in Jamestown. Reach out to me. <laughs> uh, if you don't have my email directly, you can do info at Buffalo Naval Park, and it will just get forward to me, forwarded to me. And uh, thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Uh, again, please leave comments in the actual uh, YouTube uh, channel under the description. Thank you for your support. You'll see that we've raised over uh, about $500,000 from contributions uh, from people like you. And all of that went into the actual, uh, much of that, I should say, went into the restoration uh, and getting her righted again. So uh, can't thank you all enough. And uh, we will see you again soon. Take care, everybody.